So in this video today, we're going to show you how to add corrosion inhibitor into your heating system after you've replaced a radiator. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a bleed key. So this is just a standard bleed key. A spanner, an adjustable spanner, and also a funnel. So let's have a look. So choosing the right inhibitor for your radiator, it's very easy. It's a bottle that says corrosion inhibitor on it. I don't care what brand it is. I don't care what price it is. It's radiator inhibitor. So as we can see, we're in a flat and all of the radiator pipe work actually goes up into the loft and drops down for each radiator run. So each room, it drops down in the corners. So that means that when we've actually drained down this system, we've only drained down each individual run. So where we haven't really touched a heating system, the radiator should all be filled with water still. So, so we are just going to check in those rooms that we do have water at the radiators. So if you open it up, we can see this radiator is completely full of water. And we're just going to make sure that we have some tissue paper or some blue roll just to catch any drips and so not to get it on the customer's carpet or floor. Now, whilst we're at one of these radiators that we know is already full, what you can do is you can take a sample. So you can buy a kit where you can take a sample, but for me, if you've just got a clear container, we can just fill up that container slightly. Just get this enough so that you can see it. And you can actually look at the color of the water. If it's particularly black or particularly cloudy, then obviously you might consider that you might need to either flush your system, or if you're a customer, get your system flushed so that everything is efficient, so that the water traveling through your boiler, through the pipe work and through the radiator is nice and pure. Like this, I could probably drink that, but I won't. So we're just gonna go over to our boiler here. And as you can see, it's got a digital display, which will show us the bar of pressure. As you can see at the minute, we've got no pressure whatsoever in there. Now we need to get this up to 1.5. So that's the standard across the UK. Now I know this boiler, it's a glow worm. It's a lovely glow worm 30CXI. And you know what happens when we uh, do the filling loop? So to top the water up and put water into the heating system, it needs to always leak underneath whilst you're doing it. So whilst I go down to get a little bucket to put underneath, let me tell you about fill filling loops. So filling loops tend to be a braided hose and you usually have a black toggle on one end or both ends and then you turn those both and then you can hear the water actually filling up the heating system and it's typically a braided hose it looks just like this so there you go so as you can see we've got our nice little flexible bucket underneath the boiler ready for the filling loop but first off we need to add the inhibitor into the radiator so most standard radiators they come with a blanking cap on this end and obviously your bleed valve on the opposite end. Now, if you have a towel rail, a vertical caps are on the top, so you can pour the liquid straight inside, but for these, we're gonna need our funnel. So first, we're gonna start by removing the blanking cap. So that's where we use our spanners. And take that out. And put it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. Where the fuck is that actually gone? Shit. Um, oh no. It's so like I said, find it. Uh, I mean, take it out. And then you put it in a safe place where you know where it is. So we've got our funnel. And this is one that, this is a homemade one. But you can pick these up in, in a plastic version. From most, uh, most places like Screwfix and such. Now all I'm going to do is wind in this male thread here. Like so. Just as much as I can. We know we don't need to. We don't need to tighten this up. We don't need to put some thread sealant or anything silly like that around it. We just need to get it in there enough because all we're doing is filling. So as we're filling up from one end, we need to be able to relieve the water displacement, the air displacement. So we need to open up this bleed here. Is that already open? No, it's not. There we go. Open that up. So now as the water's going in, it's displacing the air, and the air can come out. Ooh, fizzy. So let's try pouring it in. Now we just want to go 
nice and slow. Because this does sometimes back up and gurgle. Like that. I was showing you how to do it. See, so you don't do it at your, your home and use your sock just to wipe it up quickly. Oh, look at that. We put the whole of the inhibitor in. Until this radiator has got the full lot. So you can just check on the back as well. It'll tell you how many radiators it will do. This one will treat up to 10 radiators. It doesn't say what size those 10 radiators are but if we were to go around this property we'll realize that there's only five radiators so we need to give this five seconds just to make sure that it all runs through one two three four five now we can actually remove this funnel like so see it's just hand tight and again just just use your sock to get any dribbles now we're going to put this blanking cap back in like like this. It's always great doing everything one-handed because you make videos. Tighten up your blanking cap. I don't know why it keeps going out of focus. Stop doing that, please, camera. And then we need to turn the bleed back off. We're gonna leave that in place just there. Now, if I fumble about down here, there is this little toggle here. I don't know what's come out of my hand. I That's probably not it's probably not important. Uh, anyway, we're gonna turn this toggle left. And there you go, look, you can see that water is now pissing, uh, cascading from the boiler itself. And we're just gonna top that up until we hit w about one bar. So you see at the moment, it's currently at 0.3 bar. And then when that is getting to where it needs to be, we're going to turn that back clockwise like this. And then we can shut it back off. You can hear the water actually running through the boiler, which makes it very easy. Now to be able to see what pressure we're going up to. See, this is a digital gauge, not a physical little gauge. And because you have to have the boiler turned on to be able to even see this, as you can hear, the boiler has just turned itself on. Why? I don't know. The heating's not on. Um, and there's not any hot taps running, so I'm unsure. Anyway, we're about to hit one bar. So let's turn our little toggle back off. So now we can do the really exciting bit. We can uh, start bleeding the radiator. So turn the key, a quarter turn anti-clockwise. And then you see on these ones, that is a little hole where the air and the water will eventually come out. Out oh, like that! <laughs> in my mouth! <laughs> why Why does everything go wrong in my videos? And then we just, just wipe that up. By the way, I just want to, for anyone who, who doesn't have a brain cell, this is clearly my own house and not a customer's property. So the last thing I need to do is just bleed this last radiator here. So we've got our inhibitor in the system. I'm just going to bleed this one. In here, we've got air coming out. All we need to do again is just turn the key anti-clockwise, only slightly, only quarter of a turn. Get your piece of tissue over it. I know that this one's got a long way to go yet before it, uh, it's empty. And there we go, there's some water coming out there. Look, it's nice and clean. Right, so back over to the boiler. And we're just going to carry on filling up via this uh, this stupid filling loop. And the fact it leaks when you're filling it up is just bizarre to me. But anyway, apparently it's a very common thing on these glow worms. What a great brand. Please don't sue me. If you see this, I'm saying you're a great brand. I'm not saying anything negative. I'm saying you're an amazing glow worm. I love the way that your boilers leak when you're topping them up. Anyway, we're going to get this to one and a half bar. And we're going to turn it turn it back off and that's it job done so thanks for uh, thanks for watching this uh i hope this this was some sort of use to someone i don't know who would who would find any use out of this but there we go 1.5 bar quickly turn it off turn it off quick there we go 1.5 bar 
and I've got to go put this uh, this water down down the drain. Oh yes, there's another thing we need to do. Turn the heating on. So we're going to turn on the heating to make sure the radiators get hot. And you're thinking, oh, we're going to see some shots of a thermal imaging camera of these radiators getting hot. I don't own a thermal imaging camera. It's not going to be that exciting. All I'm going to do is feel at the very tops because that's where it always gets hot first. Heat rises. You can't, you're not fake, you know that. Um, and you can hear, potentially, the air running through the pipe. So in about 12 hours time, we might need to go around and just bleed the radiators again. And because this system's so small of only five radiators, what, how long was that? 40 seconds, a minute? It's already really, really hot, this radiator here. So, job done. If this is this is the sort of thing you like, you mean you can hit hit subscribe. Um, can't see why you would, but you can.